Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Zeke here again today for another episode of Indie Crunch. And today we're looking at Hammerwatch Beta. And Hammerwatch is a game that is very much inspired by games like Gauntlet. So it is multiplayer and it does actually have internet multiplayer as well. So you can host or join games, but you actually have to um, connect to a host. So I don't have any hosts. So basically it's LAN play. So if you go here, you can go to local and you can add players and you can have them controlled with joysticks. All the key bindings are completely custom. So like I said, this is very much an old school gauntlet game. So you have three classes here, the paladin, the wizard, and the ranger. I do prefer the ranged classes so far, but I'm going to go with paladin here and then switch into a ranger later. So the controls are quite simple. You just use Wasid to move around and then you have four key bindings for attacks, but you only start with two attacks. You have up to use your main melee attack, that also breaks boxes and collecting money is very important in this game. And you have left to do your secondary attack, down and right also do attacks but I don't have anything bound to them yet. You pick up more skills later in shops, as you can tell I can basically attack as fast as I can press the up button, and that really does that it really is the only thing that is an advantage in terms of using the Paladin. Other than that, you have to get right up close to enemies, and the charge often leaves you in danger. So overall, I don't like the current balance of the Paladin, but I'm assuming later on in the game it does get a bit crazier, or get a bit better. It also seems to do the least damage, but to the widest range of enemies. So you can hit like 5-6 enemies at a time with the Paladin, whereas with a Rogue or a Wizard, you can only hit 2 or 3 maybe. Anyway, so this is basically the gameplay as far as I've seen. Um, this beta includes one act of the game and no save function, so if you want to actually play it, it's free right now and it does have a green light campaign, but you have to play it all in one sitting, which isn't too bad since really there's only currently about an hour of content. Anyways, also use the charge just to show that off. As you can see, that does considerably more damage and uses a small amount of my MP, but I find for larger groups of enemies, it just leaves me really vulnerable. So... Always important to go and check out like little box areas, see if you can get extra money, because even in the small amount that I've played, there has been shops, and there has been stuff that I could not afford to buy. Specifically improvements on the skills. As you can tell, a kind of a very gauntlet-esque secret passage there reveals not only the passage behind it, but a ton of enemies as well. And as you can tell up top, I have zero keys bronze, zero keys silver, zero keys gold, and two onks. Now, I'm not entirely sure about this because I have yet to die in the game, but I'm fairly certain the Ankhs are actually revival tools that will, well, revive you, I guess I should say. But so far, impressions on the game? A lot of fun. Like, it clearly needs rebalancing and it clearly needs a lot of work, but for what it is and for being in beta and developed by a pretty small team, it's pretty awesome. By the way, I will leave links below to where you can get this game and their the Indie Gaming's um, their TIG website or link, I guess I should call it, where they will be updating the game and telling you what's happening in terms of everything. I'm sorry, I kind of failed to do my research properly with this game. Yeah, so anyways, fairly basic gameplay. I can imagine this would actually be it is fun already, but it would be a lot more fun if played with some people, especially coach co-op. I know some people are all for the online co-op, but I love coach co-op, especially when it comes to kind of these action-y dungeon games. And it does remind me a lot of, like, Baldur's Gate, a game that I was a big fan of playing, or Baldur's Gate 2, as it might be, big fan of playing on the PS2. So I have a bronze key now, I can open that bronze door, and I have gotten to a checkpoint. So now I think if I die, I will actually respawn at that checkpoint. Let's um, test that theory by just dying. As you can tell, you can take damage pretty quickly if you end up in the middle of a bunch of enemies. And there they all. Yep. So that used one of my onks, one of my continues. And that's basically all I can show you in terms of the Paladin gameplay, because I don't like the Paladin all that much, to be honest with you. Out of all the characters available so far, and there are four characters, only three available so far, that he is my least favorite, despite being able to attack at super speeds. Like, look at this. Look at that. Basically a lawnmower or some sort of rotary milling tool. <laughs> I don't know. I know there's a thresher. Thresher? No, nah, that isn't quite right. But anyways, I'm going to switch to another class right now. I just have another tab open right underneath here. So let's switch to that. I can't find my mouse. Okay, there we go. 
And here we go, I'm currently, as you can see, the rogue, so I have a bow and arrow, and I also have this bomb that I can plant, which I find to be a very, very useful special ability. So if I head up here, I will eventually run into a group of enemies, I'm hoping. So as you can see, I have more range, and um, the ranger actually has the maximum amount of range, crazily enough. I know I keep switching between calling him Rogue Ranger, but you know, to me those class types are all kind of interchangeable, unless it's D&D, in which case they're a lot more specific. But I find the bomb to be very useful, because you can either plant it where the enemies are going to arrive, or you can just plant it in the middle of a group of slower-moving enemies, like right here. And then it will eventually blow up and take care of most, of the, most, if not all of them. As you can tell, these ranged enemies are a tiny bit harder. They don't do much damage, but... I like dodging them and pretending that this is like really hardcore mode, which I'm assuming it will become really hardcore mode either, especially if they want to emulate Gauntlet, which was a ridiculously difficult game. So if you press tab, you can actually open up an overlay map, which um, you can change the opa opacity, 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 um, opacity, opa opacity, I cannot pronounce that word today. You can change the opacity of this map in the menu, so if you want to have it open all the time, you can kind of just go options right here, graphics, and no, um, game, yeah, mini map, opac opacity, back, back, resume, and there you go, you can have it open all the time, like as in a Diablo 2, just so you know where you're going, where you've been, and you don't backtrack too much. You can see I do have a bronze key in this file, but I have... Oh, there we go. There's a place to use it. No silver or gold keys yet. I will, however, plant a bomb in the middle of that big group. I know that that specific statement didn't really warrant a however. Let's plant a bomb and then draw them all forward. Oh, that is a lot of... Come on. There we go. See, good trap lane. I basically like this class because it's a lot more... You can stay at range and you don't have to put yourself in danger if you don't want to. Not to mention, it's kind of OP how you have so much spread shot with your arrow. Like, the arrow takes up a lot more space than it looks like it takes. Should not have been able to kill two bats with one arrow. Look at that. Look at that piercing damage. Awesome. Anyway, so um, I highly recommend playing this game, playing it with some friends especially and supporting the Greenlight campaign, which I will also link to in the description below, or I hope I link to it. I tend to forget that type of thing. If I do, please tell me. Anyways, now just some playing. Just some playtime, some simple ass playtime. And here's where the language may get a bit more foul because I tend to stop controlling what I say after I just, you know, stop describing what I think of the game. So I do find the money collecting a bit tedious, like uh, breaking all the boxes to collect money. I would much rather if there was some sort of like, if the monsters themselves dropped the loot and there was some sort of magnet system that would magnetize the loot to you. Just a small recommendation there. Other than that, I love the game and I know that loot collecting and specifically breaking all the barrels and collecting gold from it is a big thing in these types of games. But I've always thought it was the worst type of big thing in these games. If you know what I mean. If you understand what I'm saying. So we're going to go gather all this money. Don't need the health. I think I have actually missed a shop. There's a key in there. Hmm. Oh, and here is down to the next level. And I'm pretty sure there's like downstairs and then upstairs again. So you can go to areas that you haven't previously explored. But I do know for a fact that there's a shop over here. So I'm going to go check that out for you guys. And show you what type of abilities are for sale. And a key. Keys are always useful. I also like that there's a lot of kiting in this, but again, to be a tiny bit disparaging, I do not like the ability to only shoot in the four cardinal directions plus diagonally. So eight cardinal, eight non-cardinal directions, I'm not sure what to call that. So you can see it says star going over to the right over on the left there. It says star going over to the right on the left. That is not a sentence that comes easily, or that is easily understood. So now I have to dodge these arrows, and here's a shop. So to, to talk to this lady, you basically have to attack her, which I thought was kind of strange. And she's selling, kill 10 enemies in quick succession triggers a combo that increases movement speed and damage. So if I pick that up, then there are four other combos that she is selling, and a Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to actually see what they are unless I have the money for them. 
So I will probably be revisiting her. Oops. Oh, okay, just take the damage there. No, who cares? It's just some damage. So I'm going to go down here and see if I can gather enough money to pick up another combo. Um, apparently I have actually uncovered all the maps, all the map over in that direction. So probably time to move forward. I do have a... I thought I picked up a silver key. Extra onk over there. That'd be kind of useful. But anyways, moving on downstairs. Waiting for all players to reach exit. There's only one player! I do have two bronze keys though, so I can get out of here. Which is good, I'm glad I gathered so many keys. And I think this is probably a good situation for a bomb. There's an enemy in here that I haven't seen before. Oh, and one more bomb. And then just kite around them as much as possible. And I don't have the MP to actually use another bomb, so now I actually have to stand and fight. I don't like standing and fighting, though. I'm a rogue. I'm supposed to do the opposite. I'm supposed to be laying traps and trying to sneak up from behind. There we go. Got that big guy dead. I'm pretty sure I did not take a hit from him, so it's always a plus. Extra MP crystal hanging out there. Yeah. Anyways, controls feel really fluid. They're very easy to understand. Initially, I had actually read it and was like, this control seems a bit bad, actually. Because I didn't like the idea of my abilities being bound to the up, left, down, right keys. But uh, as it turns out, it's kind of similar in key, in terms of key mapping to a MOBA game. And you know, MOBA games are popular for a reason. They have, they're really easy to control and they're really fun to play. So key mapping similar to MOBA, definitely not a negative in terms of gameplay. Well, let's um, get a few abilities down here. And by key mappings similar to MOBA, I guess I mean having uh, skills mapped to like 1, 2, 3, 4. More similar to an MMO, but you know, less skills, so. Now let's set a bomb here. There we go. That did some damage, but I have trapped myself in a corner, which is not very good. Okay. Got out of there fairly easily. Oh, look at that. Mega cocoon over to the right there. Kind of want to go over and kill that. I just get this compulsion to kill and destroy and maim and loot whenever I'm playing these types of games. Let's drop a bomb. Your MP does recover on its own after a while. You don't have to be completely dependent on the crystals, which is good because the crystal drops appear to be mostly random. Although this game is not procedurally generated, they might have, they might be striving to procedural generation, but I'm not sure if they would have designed the levels like this if they were. So I think the love what you see is what you get. Basically the levels will always be the same, secrets will always be in the same area, and I really have to go kill that cocoon. That is making me nervous. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's actually producing more larva. More of these horrible spitting larva. Well, that did hit it. This could actually be a bit of a tough one, especially for a ranged class. Now I'm starting to see the merit of a melee class, because you could just get in there and start attacking it to hell. There we go, especially with your infinite attack speed, you could basically put it through the Thresher. Yes, Thresher is the right word, now that I think of it a bit more clearly. Thresher is indeed the word I was looking for before. So as you can see, as the game progresses, you get harder and harder enemies and harder and harder encounters, and you do not have that much health to go around, which is why I'm putting so... which is why I'm preferring the ranged classes so much more. Let's put that bomb down, hopefully take out a bunch of bats as well. And unfortunately, that's it for my bombs. Let's see if I can... Uh, okay. <laughs> Come on, keep on getting it. And there's a weapon shop over there. I wonder if I can make it to there and see what type of things they sell in there. Make it to there and see what types of things I sell in there. Best commentary 2013. Yes, Exeek. Get it here. So I'm zooming just down and around. I do not have the key required for that. And there's a ton of enemies down there. So I think this is actually where I'm going to cut the episode. So again, I will leave all pertinent links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I will see you guys next time. You can see there's a lot of puzzling too. Or little secrets and traps. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>